thank you for coming this afternoon, uh, Saturday afternoon. I hope you still have energy because uh, I need some energy down here. And uh, thank you for uh, Omnisting Nu for inviting me to talk about biomimicry and the economy. I uh, just want to do a short introduction about me. My name is Camille and I'm from Montreal, Canada. That's why I have my French accent. Um, and I've been involved in biomimicry since 2013 uh, in Germany, Switzerland, and Montreal. And um, yeah, and uh, I, I'm here uh, from the Netherlands, and uh, it was a long trip. It was uh, 12 hours from the Netherlands to Copenhagen. So I, I'm part of biomimicry Switzerland. So uh, I, and but I'm not living in Switzerland. So uh, I'm luckily didn't do uh, 20 hours of train. In instead, I was from Netherlands. Okay. Um, so a bit of my academic background, I'm an uh, environmental engineer, so I am not an economist. But I got inspired by Jamie Brown, which is also an associate of Biomimicry Switzerland. And she's our uh, community credit expert and also um, specialized in the application of biomimicry in the financial design system. And um, I learned a lot from her and throughout the years and I hope I will be able to share this knowledge and passion with you today. Oh, and uh, one of my objectives today is that you, at the end of this presentation, you'll be able to see Biomimicry, uh, you'll be able to see things in a different perspective, so in a biomimicry perspective, and I hope you will also enjoy the presentation. So just before we start, I just want to acknowledge uh, our Biomimicry Switzerland team, and Jamie Brown is the one on the, your right uh, bottom side. Uh, she's uh, the expert, and we have a, a, an amazing team, a multidisciplinary people uh, from biologists, engineers, entrepreneurs, uh, business architects, and uh, I wouldn't have been able to do this presentation without their inputs. Okay, let's dive into biomimicry. So, what is biomimicry? I saw some people here who were at the workshop this afternoon. So can someone from uh, the workshop can tell me what is biomimicry? Yes. Nature has all the answers. OK, that's a good, good uh, point to start. Uh, we can start by just looking at biomimicry, just the, the word. We can do biomimicry divided by two and see in bio we have life, and mimicry is imitate. So you imitate life. That's a simplistic way of saying what is biomimicry. Um, in the, the general definition that we use a lot is that biomimicry is an approach to innovation to seek sustainable uh, solution to our challenge by emulating nature time-tested pattern. And in other words, biomimicry finds solution inspired by nature. Uh, we, so the question that we uh, use a lot in biomimicry uh, methodology is how does nature uh, transport water, how does nature is always, how does nature and how we look, how would nature do that? Um, biomimicry push us uh, to think systemically because uh, all components in nature does not exist in isolation. So by applying biomimicry, we automatically uh, think in a systemic way and in how it, they are connected to the environment. And this is how we, learn, we tend toward uh, sustainability. Um, it can be applied in different level and scales. So we, you have form, materials, process, system. And also it can be applied in different disciplines. It can be medical science, engineering, uh, and the economy, for example. So biomimicry is not a new concept. Um, Actually, it was used back in uh, years ago in, uh, let's say, Leonardo da Vinci was using it for uh, looking at birds to make uh, human fly. But um, Jamie and Benius actually uh, in 90, 
1997, she wrote a book called Biomimicry Innovation Inspired by Nature. And this is how biomimicry became more uh, mainstreaming, become more popular and um, known around the world. And she, um, she is uh, she actually one of her. Uh, I cited one of her quotes here: "Is learning about natural world is one thing, learning from the natural world that's the switch, that's the profound switch." And I think this is really important because uh, we're not learning nature to understand um, to understand how it works. For example, we're not learning geology to understand how the earth works to be able to find petroleum, but we're learning nature to be to get inspired from. So we're not using, uh, understand nature to use it, but to get inspired from. Um, and that's a, an, import, an important notion of, of biomimicry. Um, so Jane Benyus is a biologist, and she co-founded uh, Biomimicry Institute 3.8. And here I have a question for you. Uh, why 3.8? Can someone answer this question? No idea. Just 3.8 like that. Actually, um, 3.8 because nature has evolved, life has evolved for 3.8 billion of years and adapting to the changing environment. So throughout the optimization process, uh, natural selection sort out the most sustainable um, system and adapted and adaptable. Um, so let's say that this, oh, this arrow, we don't see it completely, it's an uh, evolutionary uh, timeline, and we uh, compress it into one year to make it uh, more, uh, that you can see the, the scale. So first, it started uh, January 1st, you have uh, the Earth was born. And then in February, you have uh, life, life appears. And then after, in March, you have photosynthesis, and then multicellular organism appears. And then in November, you have all those fungi and other plant species that appears. Uh, and then in, in December, you have like amphibians, reptiles, uh, dinosaur flowers, and we are standing here. Uh, this is uh, our human species, and you can see that we, we're not even representing one-tenth of the um, evolution, life evolution. So this is to say that we, from a human perspective, we can see life, uh, we can see this evolution as a research, uh, 3.8 billion of years of research and development. And giving that investment of uh, time, we should, it would be, uh, it would make sense to uh, look at nature and try to do um, responsible innovation and learn from nature. So everything that is here today is for a reason. All the color, shapes, materials, form is there for a reason and is there because it adapted for 3.8 billion of years. And I think this is very, uh, very inspiring because nature, we can see nature as a teacher. Um, so moving on, uh, here, life principles. So biomimicry is based on life principles. And life principles are design lessons from nature. And these are six of, of them. It's adapt to changing condition, be locally attuned as responsive, use life-friendly chemistry, be resource efficient, uh, integrate development with growth, evolve to survive. And that is what we find in uh, most of the species that are thriving in, in, on the Earth. And then from this, it looks very simple, this life principles. But if you dig into it, it's much more complex. There are much more uh, definition and criteria under all of them. And then I just extract some of them that we will talk about it uh, later in the presentation. So you have diversity, uh, use readily available resource, life-friendly chemistry, multifunctional design, bottom-up, replicate successful strategies. And we are... From, for this presentation, we're going to talk more about this system instead of a uh, product. Um, so, integrating biomimicry within the existing system. So now we'll see uh, 
an example of applying biomimicry and life principle within the, ex the existing the ex existing system, so without changing the current financial system. And uh, I put this picture on purpose. This is a gecko. Uh, it's a very amazing uh, creature. The feet of the gecko, uh, some engineer got inspired by the feet. It's, it has like this tiny hair that can glue to, to any kind of sort of material, and then they can walk and also be uh, attached to the wall. And you'll see how it was uh, applied in this case studies. So this is Interface. It is a, a carpet company. Who knew that someday we will be, uh, one day we'll be inspired by a carpet in company. But it's not just a carpet company. It's more than a carpet company, as you can see. Uh, they are, they revolutionized uh, the carpet tile company uh, industry. They didn't want to follow this uh, industrial, conventional industrial system. They didn't want to do the take, make, uh, and waste linear system. They, they wanted to improve uh, in a certain way to be more sustainable. So they looked at nature. Um, so they first, they, they went outside. It's the first thing that you do in biomimicry. You go outside and you look at nature. And they looked, since that they're doing carpet, they looked at um, the, the floor, the flooring nature. And they saw that in nature, uh, you don't see um, like a, a monotone color. It's all different colors and different patterns. It's not like one patch of like green field. And, and, and then so they, they got inspired by this aesthetic uh, component. And they, make, they decided to bring from inspiration to design. So now the, the carpet are not like one big carpet, but different tiles of carpet that have different patterns and kind of like a color palette of color that are um, uh, combined together that makes it more natural. And this is uh, for product. And also for the product, they also developed a kind of um, a glue. It's uh, not a glue, it's a plastic thing. It's glue-free. You, you use it just um, under the, the carpet tile to fix it with the floor. So instead of using a glue that are, has a lot of chemicals and that are not good uh, for the environment and also for your human when you do it during the installation, they use this um, kind of patch inspired by the gecko with this uh, tiny little hair to patch it uh, between the floor and the carpet. So it's also easily uh, removable, so you can remove the carpet tile if you need it. Um, so another, so the, th that's one thing for the product and how they, they apply biomimicry. The other thing is the service. So since that, uh, since that it's all different square, you can uh, you you can the client can uh, be. Uh, can decide what kind of uh, pattern they want. It's more flexible, more modular for them. And also in in um, in this industry, the the main problem is when you have one big carpet and you have like a little a stain or a problem, you have to remove the whole carpet. So you spend a lot of money and you do a lot of waste. But since it's little carpet, a little square of little tiles, when you have like um, uh, a stain somewhere or some somewhere it's it's broken. You can just replace one, so it makes it more flex, more modular. And this is an important um, uh, life principles. And then in the business model, uh, here we can uh, integrate this circular economy. They wanted to make it. Uh, they want to recycle be able to recycle this uh, tile. So they had this process of where you can bring the old tile and then they can do it uh, a new one. And also they did a partnership with fishing nets where they recycle the fishing nets to integrate this material in their carpet tiles. So all this in uh, the supply chain, you have the products, the service, and the business model. They try to apply biomimicry as much as possible. And uh, yeah, the company, it's, it's called Interface. So you see, um, they use life-friendly chemistry, they're modular, and they close the loop of using waste for resources.
I, I think it's very uh, interesting to see how biomimicry can be applied in a company. Um, so, how would nature design a financial system? Uh, so biomimicry, as I said, it can be applied in, in product, process, and system. And we in biomimicry, we use a lot. Uh, we hear a lot about uh, bi biomimicry, how we can be inspired for a product in, in engineering. And you have this example of the kingfisher that you might have heard of it. So it's um, basically a, a, a train in Japan. Uh, they had this problem of uh, going from a tunnel, uh, leaving a tunnel with this. It was making a huge sound. Uh, so because of, of the, um, the train going through the, this tunnel. And then they looked at nature, how we would remove uh, this, this sound and increase more efficiency. And they looked at the, um, the kingfisher, which goes from uh, one density of air to the water that makes no splash. And then... They came out with this um, this is shape this shape I, ha I don't have a picture unfortunately so this is more product but now we're moving into system so how would nature design a financial system okay so we're going more into abstract things and I hope it won't be too much for you because it's the uh, <laughs> it's the end of the day uh, I will talk about the physics of complex flow networks it's very uh, basic and simple it's a graph a simple graph uh, with efficiency and resilience. And this was a finding from uh, Bernard Lieter. The, the name is right there. And he, um, he is actually an international well-known um, uh, person who, who did, uh, he co-designed the euro, actually, the, the European currency system. And he was involved also in um, implementation of different currency systems. So this um, theory doesn't come out of the blue. It's really thought and research. So the flow of complex, uh, the physics of complex flow networks uh, is, um, shows that, so in nature, in any complex flow net network that you see exchange of uh, media through different economic agents, you will have um, this, this, you can apply this, this graph. So here you can see that sustainability is defined, uh, is defined by the balance of efficiency and resilience. And we are currently here. The current financial system, we're, ten, we're more toward efficiency um, and uh, at the cost of resilience. Uh, so this uh, current financial system is primarily based on quantitative expansion rather than qualitative expansion, and um, we are we are going we are going towards zero for sustainability, and this is. Not good, obviously, because uh, it will at some point crash. So this is a top-down monoculture uh, system. And such monoculture doesn't work in long run. OK, and if we want to achieve this uh, optimum of sustainability, we need more diversity. We need to balance between, to, to find a trade-off between efficiency and resilience. And this is how nature uh, do they don't try? To, they are not too much efficient, or they're not too much resilient. They try to be just at the perfect um, uh, window of, of uh, efficiency and resilience. So we need greater diversity and more interconnectivity to be able to be uh, to thrive, to be able to uh, to survive if something happens. So we can call it a permaculture. So our Monetary system currently now, uh, sh f we should move from a monopoly of conventional uh, money towards becoming a permaculture of multiple uh, currency system. Um, so what is interesting, and that's going to come uh, very soon, and I think it's very the important part of this presentation, is that, OK, in, in the natural system, we t we want sustainability, but we also need to see. We also need to know that natural system can crash. Can have we can experience a, a fire forest, a forest fire, a flood, and something can happen. And when that happens, 
how does nature, what, what happened to nature? Well, actually, um, oh, I'm not there yet, but anyway. Uh, it, the, the one that are more resilient are the one that are su survive. So the one that can come back to the optimum. So I think from my perspective that biomimicry is beyond sustainability because uh, in nature, well, it is uh, adapt adaptive and also regenerative. And this is one term that I think is very important because we tend to think that sustainability is forever. Something like a sustainable building would be for 50, 60 years. But in, in natural, uh, in natural ecosystem system, it, things uh, things de uh, decay, things break down, and it disappears, and then it's regenerating. And this is how biomimicry include this in the definition of biomimicry. Um, so the physics uh, of complex flow network looks at the structure of the design structure of the system itself and tells us that diversity is uh, a solution to become, to have a more resilient uh, economic system. And we can apply this, uh, as I said, in different uh, complex flow network. It can be biomass in ecosystem, electron in a uh, um, power system, or money in the economy. Okay, so I hope that wasn't too much information. I hope I didn't lose anyone here. Uh, so we see, uh, we saw previously integrating biomimicry within the current system, and then after we moved to the physics of co complex flow network to understand a bit more about how nature would solve a financial design system, and then now we are looking at integrating biomimicry uh, for a new paradigm. Um, so. Actually, uh, the, the we see more and more community credit facilities that are emerging. Um, and this is from a, a design, um, biological design principle. So it's bottom up, decentralized, locally attuned. Um, and also, uh, it is iterative, modular and uh, diverse, this is, uh, diversity is uh, an important term here. Um, so there are thousands of uh, community credit facilities that exist now, uh, and then there's a different tools, platform that you can use to create this community credit facilities. Um, and what that we are using at Biome Switzerland is uh, called Community Forge. It, it's an open source platform, and you can, in 20 minutes, create your own community credit facilities. And when I talked about community credit facilities, basically it is created when a community decides to issue credit for their own goods and services. Uh, and then they have to agree upon a, a specific agreement, like they need to develop criteria so that everyone accepts uh, before entering this uh, community. So this is a concrete example of uh, biomimicry, credit, uh, biomimicry credit exchange. It's what we're doing at Biomimicry Switzerland. Um, so we, we agree to give and receive the same. And uh, we call it biocredit, but you can call it uh, however you want. And we don't use the conventional money in this in this platform. We actually use a, you can use any unit, but for our case, we use ours. So everything is ours. You 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 can decide to um, uh, host someone, and it will be in ours, and you exchange that the with other people. Um, so what is really important in the community credit uh, uh, system is that you stay small because this allows more interconnectivity between other people and it's based on trust and um, and this is it, it has a purpose why it's, it's small and then we're now tending to towards uh, so you have different community credit facilities and then now the next step is to see how we can integrate between these uh, different communities. 
Okay, so to join this community, this Vionicry uh, credit facilities, it's really easy. You need to log in and then create an account. Uh, and then there are two features. There is one is um, an accounting system that allows you to track everything, to track uh, uh, what were what was your um, exchange between who, when, and you can also see all the profiles of everyone and what they did. So it's very transparent. And you also have this internal market where you have the wants and the offers. Um, so you 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 can post whatever you need, and you and you can also offer what you you can provide to the community. And uh, this is currently a, it's a prototype. So we are uh, almost done with the prototype phase, and then we're going to go into um, a more complex uh, system to see how how it evolves, and um, to see how we can scale it a bit uh, with other communities. Okay, and then the requirement to join this, to be a membership, you basically need to uh, agree on the reciprocal exchange, the fact that when you enter, you start with zero hours, and then before you leave, you need to uh, leave uh, with zero hours, so that we, we're, we en we're ensuring that there is, um, everyone has uh, their made, made their hours. Um, yeah, and then we also uh, added another criteria is that we are not, uh, we cannot um, go beyond 13 hours of, of credit. Uh, and this allows us to not have too much depth, so it can be positive or negative, but allows us to control a bit better. And uh, so this is an example of a community credit system. Uh, you can, uh, as I said, you can easily do one uh, in, in, your, in your community. It's very easy to create. And if you come back to the life principles of, of Biomimicry, then it is bottom-up, decentralized, and iterative, and it's very uh, based on like interconnectivity with other people. So, Yes, so I think that's it. I hope that you enjoy the presentation and you learn from uh, biomimicry and you learn from nature a bit. And I, I hope that I got some people inspired here. Perfect. Give a huge hand to me.